we are given the set of vectors v, which of the following is a basis for the vector space spanned by v? A set of vectors s in a vector space v is a basis for v if the set s is independent and the set s spans v. To determine the basis of a set of vectors, number one, we check to see if the set of vectors is independent. To do this, we set up and solve the vector equation shown here below. If the equation only has the trivial solution, then the set is independent. If the set is independent, the set is the basis. If the set is dependent, meaning the vector equation has non-trivial solutions, then we eliminate the vectors that correspond to the free variables. These can be written as a linear combination of the vectors corresponding to the basic variables. The vectors corresponding to the basic variables or leading variables form the basis of the vector space spanned by the set of vectors. So let's begin by setting up the vector equation, which I've already done here on the next slide. We have c sub one times the first vector plus c sub two times the second vector plus c sub three times the third vector plus c sub four times the fourth vector equals a zero vector. And now let's go ahead and write the corresponding system of equations where the first equation is negative five c sub one plus two c sub two plus seven c sub three minus three c sub four equals zero. And the second equation is c sub one minus three c sub two minus four c sub three minus two c sub four equals zero. And for the third equation we have two c sub one minus two c sub three plus two c sub four equals zero. So the next step we will set up the augmented matrix for the system where the first row is negative five, two, seven, negative three, zero. The second row is one, negative three, negative four, negative two, zero. In the third row we have one, zero, negative two, two, zero. The next step is to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done to save time. In reduced row echelon form, the first row is one, zero, negative one, one, zero. The second row is zero, one, 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 zero. And the third row is a row of zeros. Let's go ahead and label the columns with the variables c sub one through c sub four. And now let's identify the pivots, which are the first non-zero entries in each row, here and here, which means c sub one and c sub two are the basic variables, and c sub three and c sub four are the free variables. So right away we know the system has more solutions than the trivial solution, and therefore the set of vectors is dependent, and we determine the basis by the vectors that correspond to the variables c sub one and c sub two, which are the basic variables. Which means the basis is the vector negative five, one, two, the vector that corresponds to c sub one, and the vector two, negative three, zero, the vector that corresponds to c sub two. And since c sub three and c sub four are the free variables, the vectors seven, negative four, negative two, and negative three, negative two, two, can be written as linear combinations of the two vectors forming the basis. So let's go ahead and write this out. The basis for the vector space spanned by V is vector negative five, one, two, and two, negative three, zero. So going back to our problem, we select the last set of vectors. I hope you found this helpful.